Is your gut making your PCOS worse? I know that's a really odd question, but in this video, I'm going to share with you the importance of your gut health and how by not looking after your gut, you are actually going to be worsening your PCOS symptoms. My name is Taryn. I am the founder of PCOS Diet Support and PCOSfoodies.com. And I talk a lot about PCOS and mainly how we can go about managing it naturally. So if you have PCOS and you want to know more, then I really want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel so that you can get more videos just like this. Okay, let's talk about gut health. Now, this does sound like a strange topic, but there is so much research and more and more research is happening around the importance of our gut microbiome and how that impacts on our general health and well-being. In fact, I want to share a study with you that was done on rats, okay, so it's not a human study, um, and I'm not sure that you would necessarily want to participate in a study like this, but the study was done where they took a rat with PCOS, and they took a healthy female rat, and what they did is they did a fecal transplant. So basically, they took the poo from the healthy rat, and they inserted it into the unhealthy PCOS rat. And the thing is that when we go to the toilet and we pass a stool, that stool has um, all the, the, it's an indicator of our gut mi microbiome. So there will be some traces of the gut microbiome left in that stool. And that can give a good indication to doctors and researchers about the health of our guts. So they took the stool from the rat and they inserted it into the PCOS rat. And what they found is that slowly their cysts went away and a lot of their PCOS symptoms were reversed. Okay. And that just goes to show that if we can work on our microbiomes, we can have a significant impact on our PCOS and on our symptoms. Now, researchers have also found that women with PCOS tend to have a less diverse gut microbiome. That means that our microbiomes, we don't have as much variety of microflora and bacteria in our guts as somebody with our PCOS, which means that we need to do even more work to improve the health of our gut. Now, you might be wondering why on earth are we focused on this and why on earth is this so important? What has this got to do with PCOS? Because PCOS is all about our ovaries, right? Not so much, but the research shows that about 70% of our immune system is controlled or based in our guts. And that really makes sense. If you think about the um, potential of ingesting toxins or pathogens or viruses through our digest digestive system, whether it be kind of food, food that might be off or we get food poisoning or we are, I don't know, eating something we shouldn't be eating. The gut is the body's, one of the body's main forms of defense. Okay, so it needs to be really healthy to be able to weed out the good stuff and the bad stuff and get rid of the bad stuff. And that is down to, largely down to our gut microbiome. The other thing is that research shows that an unhealthy microbiome is linked with insulin resistance. So the more of the bad guys that are living in our guts and in our intestines, the more chance we have of being insulin resistant. But the flip side of that is true. The more healthy our gut is, the less likely we are to have insulin resistance. Now, I want you to remember that insulin is crucial to PCOS. It is one of the things that we really need to focus on improving. And one of the things that we actually have a say over is our insulin resistance. So insulin is, um, makes PCOS worse in two ways. The first one is it stops a protein called sex hormone binding globulin. Basically, its job is to pick up all the free testosterone in the body. So the lower SHBG we have, the higher our testosterone levels are likely to be. Insulin resistance has a part to play in that. And insulin causes our ovaries to produce too much testosterone. So if we can manage our insulin, we'll be better able to manage our PCOS. But that's not all. The microbiome also contributes to inflammation. So this is also very closely linked to insulin resistance. The more inflammation we have, the more insulin resistance we will have. But um, making sure that we have a really good um, microbiome and a good and good gut health can help us lower our inflammatory markers. Now, in the previous video, which I'm going to link to over here, 
We spoke about how inflammation can lead to one of the more unusual symptoms of PCOS, which is periodontal disease. So one of the ways that we can improve our gum health is by making sure that we improve our gut health, because that will help to lower inflammation and then help with a lot of the other symptoms of PCOS. And again, your gut microbiome can promote high testosterone levels. Now, it tends to do this by um, promoting the um, development of testosterone in our body. It also can lower estrogen levels to, in an unhealthy way. So we want to make sure that we are looking after our guts to improve our testosterone levels and our general sex hormones. I mean, the, the gut health is so crucial to the functioning of all of our sex hormones. And lastly, your microbiome can, can impact on your weight. So the more of the unhealthy bacteria we have in our guts, the more those bacteria favor the um, highly processed foods, they, they uh, absorb a lot of the high calorie foods and they promote storage of that food into the fat cells. Okay, So your gut microbiome can have a huge impact on your weight as well. Now, if you want more information on the impact of gut health on your PCOS, then I really want to encourage you to check out a book by Dr. Felice Gersh called PCOS SOS. She talks a lot about um, gut health and the importance of your microbiome. So I really respect Dr. Gersh and I really want to encourage you to check her out. Now you might be wondering, like we've gone on and on about what um, the impact of our gut health is on our PCOS. So let's start talking about what we can do to improve our gut health. The first thing we can do is to make sure that you are eating a lot of variety of fruits and vegetables. Okay, this is what our the microbiome, the bacteria in our gut love fruits and vegetables. They love the fiber, they thrive on it. And so we want to make sure that we are eating a huge variety. The reason is that certain bacteria break down and digest certain foods. So if we are limiting our fruit and vegetables, we are um, only promoting the growth of one specific type or a couple of different types of, of that bacteria. The more variety we have, the more we are feeding kind of these little critters that are inside of us, we want to feed them all and make sure that they all have an adequate diet. And we can do that by increasing our variety. Then I thought this was so interesting. This came from um, Dr. Gersh's book. But there was a piece of research that was done where they looked at stool samples from people who were previously sedentary. They then exercised for about four weeks and then they stopped exercising. And they compared the stool samples from before exercise, during exercise, after exercise. And what they found is that when these people were exercising, they had a much bigger diversity. So there was more diversity in their gut health and their gut health was better when they were exercising. And I just think that is so fascinating because it doesn't matter how much kale you have, how many probiotics you have, you will not get the same benefits as exercise. So that's another reason that we should all really be exercising for our PCOS, apart from all the metabolic factors, apart from it's just playing good for us, apart from that it can help with weight loss, it can really help to improve our gut microbiome. Okay, the next thing is that it's really important that we focus on whole foods. Now, you would have heard me speak about this. I speak about it all the time in PCOS Foodies. I speak about it in my workshops. I speak about it just about all the time. But it is so important that we focus on whole foods, okay? The reason being is that whole foods are full of fiber. They're full of nutrients. It takes a little bit longer for your body to digest them and process them, which means that it has a better impact on our insulin levels. We're not going to get this huge spike in our insulin and drop in insulin. But apart from that, whole foods, because of the fiber, whole foods are really going to feed the healthy bacteria. Processed foods, they already are very highly refined. All you're going to be doing with the processed foods and with really sugary foods is that you are going to be promoting the growth of the unhealthy bacteria. Now, we're not going to um, kill bacteria. That's not how it works. We're not going to take an antibiotic to kill bacteria. The only way that you can get rid of the bad bacteria is you need to out, um, overcrowd them. So the good bacteria need to outnumber the bad bacteria. Okay, and one of the ways to do that is by whole foods and having lots of really good fiber. 
And the last thing that you can consider is taking a daily probiotic. Now, Dr. Gersh suggests that we shouldn't be taking a probiotic intermittently. We should be taking a probiotic every single day. And the reason being is that when you take probiotic, those probiotics don't just um, inhabit the gut and live there and have a little party, but there are a lot of benefits um, when you take a daily probiotic, and it does a lot to improve your general gut health. So those are the ways that you can improve your gut health. And I am really curious to see if you have had any experience with anything that we are speaking about. Please leave me a comment below and let me know some of the ways or some of the things that you are doing to work on improving your gut health. And I'm really curious to see what the impact of that would be in the longer term. Thank you so much for joining me again and I will see you again next week.